Hi, I'm John Caritko, owner of Lion Country Supply. And uh, today I've got my friend Dave Hughes here, Hughes View Kennel. Uh, he's been called King of the Woods by American Field Magazine. And uh, he's trained and campaigned more uh, grouse dogs and woodcock dogs across North America than any man on the planet. I'm lucky to have him as an ally and a friend of Lion Country Supply for all these years. And today we're going to video some equipment from Lion Country that he uses in his training of all these champion bird dogs. So I'm going to let my friend Dave show you how he uses some of the equipment from Lion Country to produce these dogs from starting them to a little later on uh, to making them more finished. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, John. Hey, Appreciate nice it. Nice to see you. Appreciate it. Yeah, and thanks for agreeing to help us out today no a problem. little bit. No problem. Uh, let's start off. The first thing I'm going to do is to come out with some products and how what I do on working with, with young dogs. I'm going to display how I do this with a nine-month-old gun dog pup that came in I'm working with. And then I'm going to bring down a dog that's uh, pretty well finished with the product of going through this process of what I do. One of the things is that Lion Country, they sell this pigeon restraint. I use this a lot in my pigeon work just for this process of what I'm showing you. The other thing is, and I'm a firm believer of it, I use grouse scent. They also have pheasant, they also have quail. But I use grouse scent, and what I do, uh, and I'll show you real quick, is I take, this is one that's out of the package, I take that, hold that John, I take this and I put the pigeon in, and I squirt this scent on there. I'm a firm believer that the stronger scent that you can get, even on a hot day, this, this even though it's grass scent, will help that dog. It'll help bring it to it, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a moment when I start check cording. And I, I'm using the Line Country check cord. I use a lot of the equipment I get from him, and you know these uh, things I use uh, also the. I got pigeons in here, the Lion Country bag, and I use them extensively. And I have it filled with pigeons because I'm gonna demo a young puppy and then I'm gonna bring another dog in that's a little older that's already been through so you get an idea of the restraint with grouse scent in there. I highly recommend pheasants, quail, or grouse. I like to put it on heavy and the only reason for that is it helps the scent of the dog. I know, why is that, that doesn't, it does help. I've had dogs that never saw grass, went through this, take them out and all of a sudden they're on point because that memory bank in there, a smart dog, will, will work with that grass scent. Trust me, it works. And I've, I've used it and that's why... I know I've, you've always sworn by that. I swear stuff. by it. I use bottles stuff. upon so bottles. He's giving you his secrets now here. A These little bit of a secret. I didn't think he would ever give up and talk about on camera and let me do. We talked about it before and he said, uh, and, John, know, I can't give up all my secrets. Yeah, know? but so you know, I it's, appreciate you doing that it's, today. It's, it's one of those things that, like I said, they have pheasants and they have quail scent. I think the more scent you put on this restraint, it's Velcro and it holds it good. One of the reasons for that, it helps give off more scent to get the young dog started to be birdie. Lots of times you'll pull out the pigeon where it's not in that restraint and you'll be working dog on a check cord. The next one, he'll go over and point that spot because some of this is left over on it. And that's getting the idea of his mind working. And my, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. This I've is always what it's thought about. that in the summer too, and other trainers like Roy Sisler and Rick Smith, they say that the, you know, this green grass chokes scent. And uh, if you can help that out. But uh, what you're saying, Dave, is that you think that my grouse scent will, if you're a grouse dog, if you're training for grouse dogs, this carries right over. That they would tell absolutely, the difference absolutely between quail, carries. pheasant, grouse. Believe it or not, it does. I know you there think you I'm, heard it from you, the man. You, you think I'm crazy, way. but I think I've bought off of John hundreds of these bottles. <laughs> And he says, hey, what are you doing with all that grouse scent? Well, some people, you know, they, they get grouse scent and they put it on a rag 
and work that way. And I use a restraint pigeon. Now, to give you a little idea of what I do, I use this here. Now, I showed the check cord already. Uh, I always just grab a pigeon here, and it's very simplified to throw this pigeon right in the sock. And this is something I'm going to run by the public a little bit because it's happened to me. If it's a real hot day, when you put that on, okay, for the sake of the pigeon, because it seems all of us trainers run out of pigeon. I wrap it around in the back, not so tight. I want them to be able to kick around. They'll move around. But if you put it like this area, real tight, it cuts his wind off. And the next thing you know, you're working and there's your pigeon hood. So the restraint's humane. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I suggest to bring it back around. He can't go anywhere. So this is my scent pattern. And then I'm going to get a young dog, we're going to check cord it, he's going to video me as I'm check cording, and I'll show you what I do. And, and this bird will always be in the position, I never fly this bird, I fly the bird out of here. And what I'm trying to teach the dog is, I'm the flusher, not the dog. And this is a young dog just in the program, you'll see me working. The other thing, I don't go out and I'm going whoa, whoa, and jerking the whole time. I let the dog work in the scent cone to get him the point, and if he does and he's standing good, I'll say real quiet, I go whoop, whoop, and then I go in front. If he moves, I throw a pigeon. He sees the pigeon go, at least he knows every time he moves, the pigeon's in the air. It's just a, a different way that I do it, uh, starting young dogs. All right, what I'm going to display here, you saw the check cord, the pigeon restraint, and I have a bag of pigeons here. This is a puppy that was sent to me to work with, and it's a very young pup, it's nine months old, and I started out with my pigeon routine, and, and you can watch as I'm doing this, and I, a lot of times I don't say a lot when I do this. I want the dog's mind on it. Now, as you look out there, you cannot see where the pigeon is, and you watch as I move the dog around on the cord. When she points, I stand her and let her point it for a while, I get a pigeon out of the, the bag and I'll start kicking if she'll let me. If not, I'll throw the pigeon. If she goes, I just pull her back a little bit when she stops and I tell her, whoa. So you'll see what I'm doing. And we'll start out here. Come on, Belle. The main thing is you want to make sure the wind direction, you want her to smell the wind, not point, sight point. I want her to use her nose. And as I'm working her across, I'm trying to get her in the wind. It's whipping around a little. I talked to him a little. Hi, babe. I hadn't picked the scent up yet. Good girl. That was different, Dave. I saw you drop that bird instead of throw it over the head. Drop it on the ground. And let it come up, and it really took her mind off of it, it seemed. Well, she didn't go after the, the she didn't go after the tethered bird. Uh-uh. She smelled the scent, went on point. If you notice, I wasn't in, and, and a lot of people do this, it's a habit. They start screaming, whoa, whoa, whoa. Absolutely keep your mouth shut. You want the dog to do it naturally. Keep your mouth quiet. When you get in front, she was gonna move. When she moved, I threw the pigeon on the ground. She saw it, wanted to go after it. She's pulling. If you notice, the minute she stopped, I said, whoa. But it didn't after introduce, she stopped, after please. she stopped, you're jerking around, yeah, I saw that. you're jerking around. 
And I say, whoa, after that, after what and I'm most saying. Most people all just want to start hollering, whoa, 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 right away, Correct. and it just messes their minds up. It, it, it just, fools, it, it, you, you lose your whole situation with it's the like, word. It's uh, like this our is, buddy Rick says, yeah. the silent command, you know. It's a silent command, and this dog here is about nine months old. It's grass ridge breeding, I'm pretty sure. No, it's uh, long gone setter breeding, uh, but they brought it down to me to work with. I've had about three weeks in this pigeon program. She's almost ready. I, I put a belly band on her yesterday a little bit, but she's a puppy, and the puppy is what I'm trying to introduce this. And when she moved, I threw the bird. And you can see, she didn't go after the bird I had tethered, and you couldn't see the bird. That was all done by scent. And that's how we got that started. Okay. The next dog that I'm bringing out, it's kind of interesting. Uh, the dog's in a pen next to the area where I do a lot of the pigeon work. And a lot of trainers were asked questions and so forth. A tie out chain with three or four dogs on there, watch you do this repetition and training. It's amazing how smart dogs will pick things up like that. So this dog has seen this program going through and through. Now I haven't done a lot of pigeon work, but I'll show you how smart this dog and picked up because it wasn't on a tie up, but it's on a pen. Last year I had another dog I did the same thing with and those dogs are easy to work with. They watch these other dogs, the pigeons flying, they hear me tell them whoa well when the dog stops and they pick up right on it. And that's why I said a good tie-out chain with three, four dogs on it, watching you in the field working the other dogs, they pick up a lot of stuff off the other dog being trained and it makes it easier. I've had her in that pen and she watches the other dogs going through this. And I think even Rick Smith will tell you that he'd rather have a tie-out chain having those dogs watch the other dogs being worked. Yeah, that's their And this thing dog is. picked up on this, tells me she got a lot of brains a lot of smarts. They sit there see if I can get her. Turn. See if I can get her into the wind a little bit. Not picking up the scent. Like she should. Whoop! Whoop! Now I said whoop to her. This 10 month old puppy that's letting me work with her. It's 10 months old. She can see I didn't go right in front of her. I worked my way back. She's standing there watching these birds go. Makes it a lot easier when I take her back on liberated birds to work with down the road. He got the grouse scent, the pigeons hidden, and he got the scent. And I'm not going to go directly to that. What I'm going to do is flush, and, and I, this is the object of the restraint. Uh, I'm going to flush for the dog but it's not going right to the dog, it's out here. Because if you're in the woods or you're working, one of the things you want to do is kicking around. And he sent that and he's on point and I kick around and all of a sudden way off, there goes the bird. Now, what's that teaching the dog? When he hits hot scent, he points and you flush wide. Don't come in and flush the bird right on top after the dog's through the stage and standing its birds real good. And I did that just to show you that he understands what I'm after. The bird, strong scent, but I'm clear out here to flush. I just don't do it right on top of the yeah, dog. Grouse, grouse aren't under your nose. That's what I'm trying to And you got to put express. that in early yeah. probably. So and we that's saw a the way we, of doing it. Right. We saw the puppy at the beginning. After a bit, I might jerk a little more, but I always keep my mouth shut. But when I take him out, a dog that's already been through all this, he points, I never flush that bird. I flush out here. And the object of that is to teach the dog that grouse could be out a distance from me. And so that's what I'm, I strive and work towards. Thank you for watching this segment of Lion Country Supply TV.
To learn more about the great products featured in today's video with Dave Hughes, please click the following links that will take you to our website, lcsupply.com. Or for more information, you can call us at 800-662-5202.